to call the order of the, the regular meeting of the Board of Education at 752. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we uh, proceed, um, I'd like to take a moment of silence. Um, over the last couple of weeks here, uh, we have two of our students lost a parent. So if we could just pause for a minute. Thank you. Sandy, could you read the mission statement, please, and take roll. At Richmond Community Schools, we provide a quality education that empowers students to be successful in the global community. Um, Dania, our board member Sutton is absent with notice. Um, board member Kelto? Here. Board member Cunningham? Here. Board member Aldani? Here. Board member Marshawn? Here. Board member Pacito? Here. And I'm board member Fortuna, and I'm also here. We have a quorum. Thank you. I'm looking for a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, before we do that, uh, Connor, is Connor not going to be here tonight? No. Or is someone doing this report? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I'm looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Do I have a support? Support. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walmsley, any discussion? Mr. Field. For recovery board resolutions, we're excited to Gregory G. Vice President, Lisa Montrose, Ashley G. Dorno, Motion Supervisor in Child Care, Assistant, Kenneth Garab, who is the GV Baseball Coach, Mary Ransom, she was recently hired as a district by Assistant Cook and Board Commission. Another job offer. Uh, Lindsay Warnick was assistant cook at Lee. She resigned as well. We have um, appointment custodial hires. We have appointment of Linda Noah Collins, who's going from motion supervisor to assistant cook. We also have for the future board meeting, we have recommendations to hire for Cook to replace and so will be on the upcoming board agendas. Um, there were no errors brought to my attention regarding the February 12th uh, Board of Education meeting. Any questions or discussion from the board? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next item on our agenda is our uh, presentation of the Fiscal 2024 Budget Amendment 1. Um, back in um, June 26th of 2023, we approved the 23-24 original budget. We got to pull it up, too. Is it true? Is that better? Yes, no? Yep. Um, at the time, we had a lot of assumptions. Now we have a much clearer picture of where our 2023-24 budget is headed. Um, the general fund budget, budget amendment that we're presenting tonight adjusts some of our assumptions. Our per pupil foundation was, as we assumed, um, 9,608 in the original budget, and that's what it actually is, which is an increase of 458 from the 2023 foundation. Our blended enrollment was 1,553.78 in our original budget. It actually went down about 16.79 students, and the actual blended count is 1,536.99. Most of the grants we receive are being amended um, because now we know what they actually are. We have some grants that we do not know if we're getting funded. We've applied but are waiting for funding, or we know we're getting it, but they haven't determined the dollar amount yet, so we haven't received notice on what the funding will be. So those grants will be brought back to you probably at the second amendment in June, the final amendment. Um, expenditures have been updated. One of the big things that we did was, as this year is kind of a pilot year for 
purchasing classroom supplies at all the levels. We put in original budget amounts. Now that we are partly through the year, we have where we are year to date, and we're anticipating where it will end. So you will see modifications in the budget amendment for supplies. Other expenditures that we'll have to wait till the end of the year to adjust are things like utilities, fuel costs, snow plowing costs, because we don't know what those are actually going to be just yet. So some of the grants that we expect to hear from are like we have a 23G grant, which is the Michigan Kids Back on Track grant. We know we're getting funding. We haven't really received a dollar amount yet, so that has not been updated in your budget. 27K is a student loan repayment program. We know we are applying for that. The application comes out this week. We do not know what that grant is going to be in total, what it's going to look like. So that is not in this budget later. Um, there's a 35J grant for professional development, curriculum, and supports. Again, that's a grant we've applied for or are applying for. We do not have notice of funding. Um, 99H First Robotics and 104 Benchmark Assessments are grants that we've received in the past. We have not received an award for this year yet. There are um, amounts in the budget from where we were last year. We do not make any changes to that at this point. And there's a 99U Imagine Learning Grant. We've received notice we're not funded, but we are able to get um, some program for our English learners through Imagine Learning at no cost. So going through the grant, um, you have Brian has the summary up, up, up at the top. Um, if you want to start with the revenues, local revenues did not change much. Um, although we did make adjustments for property taxes on where we believe they are going based on current taxable values that are in the, at the state website. We reduced the preschool money that comes in from our tuition program because we opened another GSRP classroom which shifted students from one to the other. Um, we've increased, we had a donation that came in for our LL education grant, so there's a donation and the revenues for that now. And then the last thing is the transportation director agreement with New Haven is kind of being modified as we go this year, so that um, local revenue has been modified as well. When we get to state revenues, there's a change, an increase of $1.4 million. We have several new revenues under state revenues. One is the 29-7 enrollment stabilization payments that we're eligible to receive. So that that money, 162,000, has been added to the budget. Tim, can I interrupt? Yeah. So the board understands basically the loss in students that we had over what we budgeted, and this revenue basically is a wash. So this is the first time that I'm aware of the districts were able to get this from the state it was in the budget uh, this past year in the governor's proposed budget it is a line item still in it to help districts mitigate any loss of students so you're not getting it hit in one year and kind of over time work through that so we need to see how this impacts year two but for this year we received 162,000 for our receiving that. Um, another new budget line is 22L district transportation costs, and that is something that the governor put in her budget for helping districts because transportation is far more costly than you know what we what we actually get in in, you know, in our regular foundation. So they put in 108 thousand in our budget. Um, we don't have an exact dollar amount. Macomb ISD is actually putting together the formula to determine how much money is going to be available to each district. They gave us a, a number on our state aid report um, and at a meeting with Macomb ISD. They suggested just budget 80% um, of that at this point because we don't know how much it's going to be. We don't want it to be too high. I'm always happy when we get more, but I not want to have to take away. So. Um, another new grant that we have is the FAFSA Completion Challenge Grant, which is $2,500 for our high school. Um, there are some revenues that have increased. Our at-risk funding increased. And we had some carryover from last year. Um, so that added 237000 to state revenues. Last year, we received a 31 AA mental health grant and a 97 school safety per pupil grant. They combined those into one grant this year under 31 AA. So um, when you look under 31 AA, our revenue increased 184000 But that was partially offset by 178000 by eliminating um, the school safety grant, the 97. Our special ed headly obligation 
is part of our foundation, but it's also partly based on our actual cost report that we submit each year that covers, that we tell the state how much we pay for special ed. Um, and once they make those adjustments, they, they estimate from the prior year. So our last year's cost were more than the prior year, so we're getting an increase in that revenue for this year. And that added 194000 to our um, state revenues. Another big item is the MIPSERS AAL rate stabilization grant, which really is money in, money out. It's money the, the state invests into the unfunded actuarial accrued liability of the retirement system. So they send us money every month in our state aid payment, except for September, we don't get a state aid payment. And then every month we pay it out back to the state. So when it comes in, we get two payments in two months worth in November to cover October and November. And then in early December, we have to pay it back out. So each month it comes in on the 20th, we turn around and pay that back to the state and to the MIPSER system each year. But that increased, we have to increase the revenue and the expenditure. So our revenue increased 363000 and that's most of the changes in our state revenues, which went from $15.7 million to $17.1 million in this budget amendment, which is an increase of $1.4 million. Any questions on the state? So the, the Mipster thing, so they give us some monies, but is it the total that covers that, the total cost that we're paying out as a district or no? It, doesn't co- it covers the UAAL portion. Got so it. they set a rate that's considered UAAL. Okay. We apply that to all of our payroll. And, but, and then in return, we get state aid payments each month that has a UAAL okay. amount in it. And okay. We have to turn around and pay that back to the state. Okay. So it has to flow through us. <laughs> That started many years ago. And so yeah, it just started <laughs> under uh, I think Governor Schneider, was I think the, so, yes. where it started to, um, under Governor Graham, who was kind of a pay-as-you-go model, where Governor Schneider put in place, we need to look at what it's truly going to cost us to fully fund the retirement system. So that's when this came into effect. You will hear in the news recently, if the governor did announce, that the payoff for that unfunded is expected to be done sooner than what they projected, which is part of her shifting of funds in this upcoming gut bu- budget. I shouldn't say shifting of funds. Taking that funds that we don't need because we we funded the liability as a state to putting it in investing in some of the programs that she has in her proposed budget, like expanding the, the preschool programs. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Any other questions on the state portion of our revenue? And we did, like Brian said, make the adjustment in our foundation revenues for the 16.79 reduction in students. So under federal sources, we had a decrease, um, and that decrease was 339000 um, Large part of that decrease is the American Rescue Plan, the child, child Care Stabilization Grants that we were receiving. They did not renew those, so we do not have anything coming in for this year. But that is reducing our federal grant by about 18, 218000 um, As you know, the ESSER grants, we had several. ESSER two, we had for um, credit recovery, summer programming, and then we had a per pupil, 98C per, per pupil learning loss grant. All of those expired September 30th. Um, so we had small amounts that we spent for the summer program in 2023. Um, so those amounts are being reduced as well. Um, 42000 for the summer programming, 7300 for the credit recovery, and 38000 for the 98C learning loss. Those are the monies that we're using, we received, and now have used, so that grant money is, is gone. Um, ESSER 3 was adjusted to the remaining. This is the third year of ESSER 3. Um, we adjusted this year's revenue to what was left after years one and two, and I'll go through that plan in detail, but that um, decreased our revenue about 21000 So we did pretty well splitting it over three years, trying to go evenly. Our title grants are all adjusted. Um, title one, our allocation went down, but because of carryover, because of funding, well, we funded AIDS last year and unspent dollars at the non-public school, um, we increased our federal Title I money by 20000 decreased our Title II because our allocation decreased by 20000 20, and Title IV decreased 1400 We also have our IDEA programs, which is a formula. Our allocation is based on the formula that Macomb ISD uses. They changed their formula a couple years ago, um, which resulted in lower revenue for Richmond. 
and they don't, I don't think they have a choice. It's um, another ISD was audited, and they used the same formula as that ISD, and that ISD had to change. So they had to change their formula. So for us this year, the first thing we lost was um, decrease in our IDEA and IDEA preschool, which is about 40000 in addition, we had a, an inter-district source revenue that Nicole ISD gave us last year to help get through this reduction of about 242000 that they did not give us this year. So that money is also out of the budget. That's considered an inter-district source. Um, so just to give you the context, the child studies, the stuff that we put in place to try doing everything that we can to help a child before they're labeled special education works against us in this formula. So when you look at our special ed numbers, we are proportionally lower than other districts, but we are higher in the 504s and other interventions that we do to try doing everything we can for a student before they actually label. So. I guess the good work is we're doing the right thing for kids. Um, the bad part is the system penalized you. So um, the ISD did over the last couple of years reduce that. This is the final year that we don't have any of that, that revenue, which is 231000 a lost revenue. Um, under Perkins, we actually got a little bit of a bump. So normally that's around 17000 They gave us a one-time increase this year to 21334 so that's about a 4000 $4,300 increase. Um, at, a couple of years ago, we were given a federal portion of GSE RP money. That money is also gone, so that's about a $30,000 reduction in, in federal funding. So our federal revenues are, we're at $1.6 million in our original budget. They're now at just under $1.3 million, so we had a reduction of $339,000. Any questions on the federal? And then the last um, inter-district sources, I talked about the special education millage of the $264,000 reduction. Um, that's $242,000 of it. Um, we also provide New Haven and Richmond kind of help each other out with transportation. So um, when they're short of drivers, we have our drivers go and do runs if we have drivers to spare. Um, last year, we they needed more help than they do this year. So we reduced that revenue by about $26,000 because... Their, I think their staffing is stabilized as ours has, so there isn't quite as much um, work back and forth for those districts. So our inner district revenues went from 1.1 million to 863,000 for a reduction of about 265,000. What year is the special ed? Third year? The enhancement village? Yeah. Uh, it was approved right before, so 19, so it was a funded. And 20, so 20, 21, 22, 23, this would be the fourth, fifth year? Fourth year, it was approved in 2020. In so March. this July would be the, the fifth year of levying that special, halfway through the 10 year millage. The, the enhanced mill is different than the special ed mill. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just oh. okay. Well, you, did I? Did, okay, okay right. I wasn't right. sure. I wasn't right. confused too. Okay. Right. Yeah, our budget includes 834000 for the, for the, <laughs> the enhanced mill. So in total, our revenues went from 22.7 million to 22.2 million, and we're at 23. I'm sorry, let me start that again. We started at 22.2 million, and we are now at 23 million in revenues. Any questions on revenues? Okay, we we'll go on to elementary. The expenditure side. Um, throughout this, we adjusted salaries, but for contract purposes for people who moved around for new hires um, you know maybe we change percentages on what someone was doing in a building or maybe the change percentage of the grant funding so that flows through throughout this budget um, we did add three teaching positions to cover leaves in science music and counseling and we also added a second instructional coach position that is being funded under 31a so under elementary you can see the impact of the salaries um, increased about 39,000 from 1.1470 to 1.5 million. Um, as you look down, you can see there's an increase in supplies of about 9,550, and you see an increase in capital outlay to 33,031, and that is ESSER 3, uh, one of our last purchases for um, technology on, out of ESSER 3 that included 67 laptop cases for the elementary school. 
go on to the middle school. I'm sorry. Okay. Real quick. The supplies. Now, is that where we, did we increase the supplies? You did that we for the classroom purposes? Right. Yes. This is where, when we, when we approved this budget, we had, you know, an estimate of what we thought those supplies would be for those basic classroom materials at all three buildings. So now that we're partway through the year, you can see what they're actually spending and make that adjustment in this amended budget. Thank you. That supply also includes the set aside for curriculum for the elementary component is in there. Okay. So the hundred and fifty thousand right. we set yes. aside, a portion of that's for elementary, a portion of that's for middle school, a portion of for high school, that would fall in that supply too. Yes, that falls under under textbooks, which is considered a supply. Okay, any more questions on elementary? Then moving on to middle school, same type of thing. We have um, the health benefits increased, and that is just basically people um, moving in with full family that maybe were not previously full family, um, just shifting personnel. Um, we have the increased supply cost. Um, it also includes money that we are taking from the high school supplies, putting in middle school supplies, and to share the band and choir uniforms between the two buildings. So they both have some money for that in each building. Um, and then Esther 3 subs also um, is budgeted, so we are still using the Esther 3 subs, and we'll talk about that when we get to the Esther 3 and the next item on the agenda. Under salaries for high school, again, we're shifting people and um, adjusting percentages and where they're at. That doesn't, We didn't change too much in salaries. Um, you can see health benefits changed by 98,000, a reduction. Um, that is pretty much, we just have a lot of new staff at the high school. Um, so some are cash and lose, some are single. So it's just a change in staffing. Under purchase services, there's a decrease of about 36,000 in state events. That was when we sent um, a high school class week to We the People. Um, so we're reducing that. That didn't happen this year. And then the capital outlay also, again, reflects um, the ESSER 3 laptops for the high school. Any questions on that? Is there a reason why the retirement went up at the high school level? Newer people coming in yes. have, have seven plans to choose from. And so the traditional plans, which tend to be what we were using to budget, we now have enough people who are coming in under the newer plans and those cost more. So we're adjusting our budget to budget by the person's rate, not the estimated average rate. Thank you. I don't want to be short in the budget, so we want to be as no. as we can. But, but the days of using the average of the, the traditional plans right. that are, are kind of gone. There's more newer people, and so that what was supposed to save districts money conceptually when they put these newer options in is actually costing more than what previous plans were from a district cost. Yes, and they have different plans they can choose from. It really does depend on the plan, and, and there's a there's a 401k option in the plans and how much we have to match and how much people put in. So on to preschool. But you can see that cost increase in total by about $164,000 for preschool. We started a new GSRP classroom, so those are the costs to add that classroom. Under summer school, you see an overall decrease of about 57000 but we're really shifting which grants we're funding preschool with. So under the 23 Bs that were the from the ESSER 2 grant, we expense that under a function 119. We're now using more of the 35A um, grant, and so that will shift to the 125 function. And we may need to do further tweaking as we put that program together. So that may be something in the second amendment. Under special ed, not a lot of change, um, mostly staffing related, an increase of about 78,000. Under title, Title I at risk, um, we had adjustments in the 31A grant, um, the 35A summer school is reflected here, and then some changes in Section 41 and in Title II. And then well, that increased that budget by about 116,000. Any questions on that? Under vocational ed, um, under voc ed, our salaries increased, our benefits increased. We have more voc ed classes than we used to. Um, we increased those, so that increased the personnel cost for those classes. Under purchase services, 
Um, we purchased software for the computer class. Under supplies, there's an increase for culinary arts. Textbooks, um, AIS textbooks is one of the types of textbooks we purchased. And then under capital outlay, you can see that was a significant increase by about 91000 But as Ms. Zabo presented a few meetings ago, um, that's the CTE equipment grant for the anatomage table. So that's been ordered. We're not sure when it's going to get here. We hope soon. Um, but that's in this grant. That's with that $91,000 increase from 55 to 146 so that brings our total instructional expenses. We started out at 11,959. 11,959,000. We're now at 12,580,000, an increase of 620,000. Under guidance services, not a lot of change there. Um, we did add an additional position. Again, that was one of the three that I talked about because of leaves for <coughs> position. Under health services. Um, there's a line item added for $15,000. That's a 31AA grant um, that we're using for mental health for students. So that's where that shows up as under health services. And there may be, I think we have one assembly at least planned that I'm aware of. So that, that may change from supplies to purchase services in the final minute, some portion of that. Not a lot of change, on, nothing change under psychological services. Not, no real change under speech and audiology services. Moving on to social social work services, there's a decrease there of about 23,000 under purchase services. Um, that was where we had our resource officer. Um, and that shifted down to, that was a funded under 31A. That has now been shifted into the 30. security services under 31AA mental health and, and safety. So you'll see that um, in another section of the budget menu. Under teaching consulting services, um, that did increase. I believe we had some a new person hired there as well, so it's personnel related. So do you have health benefits? Is that, is that a part time position? Or is a those, are, those are people who are allocated, so it's, it's not usually a full time person, it's a portion. And some, some of them will take um, cash and lieu of insurance, or they're not. So they might be listed as a teacher consultant slash resource room. So part of their salary is going to be charged here, and part of it's going to be under function code 122, which is resource room. So that whatever it's charged here is the portion that they are a teacher consultant. So it might be two hours of the day, and five out of the seven hours they're a resource room. And if they take single coverage, it's it's not it's you know much smaller dollar amount. The retirement retirement. Retirement is just based on their salary, and that's that's about it's a little over fifty percent when you factor in the UAL. So again, the retirement is for that portion as a TC, and then the other part of their retirement is under if they're part of a resource room. So it depends on what their schedule is. Yeah, we're supposed to whatever whatever FTE percentage we put in for salary, we're supposed to continue that through the benefit cost. So that's what was reflected here. It's just a portion, a portion of salaries, a portion of benefits. Any other questions on that? Does that answer your question, from this? It does. So you separate it depending on which yeah. area they're working in. Correct. It's kind of like the elementary they're specials. Okay. They're partly in the elementary 111, but for two hours a day, they service four and five, so they're going to be charged to 112, the middle school. So they're split between the two function cards. And that's all dictated by the state charter accounts that we have to follow. Which I appreciate because it keeps everything simple. Yeah. <laughs> um, under simple. other people's services, as simple as it can be, right? <laughs> simple for me. Um, under other people's services, you'll notice a reduction in purchase services of about 26000 The other numbers didn't change. That was our robotics national event that we had in our original budget that we are not using this year, at least not the that I've been told we're using, so we did reduce that. Under improvement of instruction, that's mostly grant funded. Um, staff going to trainings or having trainings during the summertime. Um, there's some additional funding under 31A, so that increased about 125,000. But that's all pretty much grant funded. There's no real change under library or technology. Under supervision of instructional staff, 
Um, we had a contract increase. We also increased the cost that we allocate for the Dean of Students at Lee Elementary because he's in charge of GSRP and we've added another classroom, so we increased the allocation to supervision of staff. And we can claim that in the GSRP grant. Uh, also under that line, under supervision of structural staff, you'll see purchase services increased about 11000 and that is the GSRP Early Childhood Specialist, which is also funded by the grant. With the new classroom, there's an additional cost for that specialist to come into our district. Under academic student assessment, that decreased about 39000 We did we, uh, purchase three years worth of the NWEA. Um, we also may get some relief with the 104 academic Grants, yes. Under Board of Education, there's an increase of about 23,000 in purchase services. Um, we increased the advertising budget and the audit costs also went up. We had a 2020 bond audit that they had to do, so obviously that's not free, so that is reflected in, the, in that purchase service line. And then other expenses also increased about 14,000. Um, most of that is added Hall of Fame supplies for the Hall of Fame event that we put on and hope is getting that process completed at the high school. Any questions on that? Um, to executive administration, no real change there. We made some adjustments for um, administrative assistant and contract costs. Under office of the principal, again, contract pay increases. The other thing we did was with our new secretary at the admin office that covers athletics and um, custodial building and grounds, the 0.25 that we were charging for secretaries has now been moved back into the office of the principal. They're not doing athletic work. So you'll see a reduction in salaries at the athletic level, and that is reflected here as an increase in salaries in the office of the principal. So the shift. Any questions on that? No real changes under business office, just sales contract increases, other business services. We increased our premiums with the added square footage, um, it just cost a little more to insure them, so that increased about 6000 And then legal services, we increased that by 7000 Under operations and maintenance, um, you'll see a decrease in salaries and the corresponding retirement FICA, that was removal of the ESSER three COVID building aids. They cleaned um, doorknobs and wiped things down. We did not have them this year, which was part of our ESSER three plan, so that is a reduction in that budget. Um, we increased supplies for electricity and the paper and cleaning products that we use throughout uh, the building. So it um, covers, make sure our bathrooms are stocked and it also covers make sure we have the cleaning supplies that we need. Under security services, it's a new section for salaries and retirement and FICA. Those are our 31 AA funded security monitors, our bus drivers who, after they finish their runs in the morning, come in and spend time working in the buildings. Under purchase services, of, under that security services section, um, we added the liaison officer under the 31AA grant, but we removed the 97 grant expenditures that included um, purchase service for the crisis alert system that we purchased, and then the supplies, we had the night locks that we purchased under the 97 grant, and some supplies for the crisis alert system. Any question on security services? Next section is pupil transportation. Um, we adjusted costs to salaries to what we um, project for the rest of the year. Um, health benefits are, have increased by about 35000 and that, again, is our bus drivers now qualify for benefits since they're working more hours, and some of them are taking the benefits. Not all, but most. Um, so that's about a $35,000 increase. And we increased supplies a little bit to cover our oil and gas costs oil and grease costs. We did not touch fuel costs at this point. Um, skipping down to support services communication, there's an um, increase of about 24000 for the newsletter that we've been putting out in the last year, this year. Under support services staff personnel, we had contract cost adjustments. 
Um, we also have, been, have purchased an evaluation software that's reflected um, and some 31AA mental health. We put money into each of the buildings for staffing for, from the 31AA mental health grant so we can do things for our staff. Um, under support services technical, um, we had some SR3 software, and we had a line that we reduced from 16,000 to 1,000. It was a capital outlay line that we have not had a need for, so we reduced that. And that's been pretty much consistent for the last few years because of the SR money we have not needed to make purchases under that line. No real changes under pupil accounting. Athletics, you'll see the salary decrease from the secretarial shift back, taking that 0.25 for the high school secretary and the middle school secretary and putting it back under office of the principal. So under total support services, supporting services, we started at 9.5 million. We're now at 9.8 million for an increase of about 293,000. Any questions on support services? So um, for the fuel costs, you said that we haven't changed or anything at this point. I, I mean, do you suspect then that we'll have a savings on that due to not having to go to New Haven and doing that? Like, not doing as much of that? Like, do you think that there would be a significant savings on that? They, they do drive the New Haven buses. Okay. So oh, I see. Buses. Okay, It's just gotcha. the personnel going down and okay. doing the runs. All right. I'm just looking for you. No, I see. <laughs> <laughs> we typically, for fuel, electricity, water, try to budget conservative because you just don't know sure. what the fuel rates would be. At this point, if I had to predict, there are probably going to be some roll-up that we won't spend in those dollars. But I could say that tonight, in a week, sure. fuel prices jump, or you know, um, someone leaves the door open and leaves the air conditioning running, and now our electrical prices or our electrical costs go up. Which we're, you know, this is our last year, and this year we're going to really kind of figure what truly is our electric on a normal year. So. I anticipate there what we won't spend all of it, but there always is that unknown out there. I'd, I'd rather be conservative and have money to roll up at the end Absolutely, and yeah. come back to you and say, "I'm sorry, you know, I need, need more. another fifty thousand. <laughs> yes. Right. yes, I appreciate that. Puts us in a better light. Okay. Moving on to community services, um, no real change under the community education grants. Most of that is grant funded. Um, custody and care of children. So there are some reductions here because of the loss of the child care loss, the, the uh, child care grants that are no longer uh, available to us. So there's some staffing costs that under those grants we were required to pay bonuses to the staff. We aren't required to do that. The grant funding is gone, so that is a reduction in the salaries. And then under supplies and other, there's a large decrease of about 91000 as you remember, we did an outdoor activity center, and this is where the supplies and costs um, fell for that under the ARP child care stabilization grant. No real changes to welfare activities. Non-public school services is pretty much all grants that we're required to pay a portion of a grant for IDEA, Title I, Title II, Title IV, allocate money to those schools. We collect the money. They send us their budgets. We put it in our grant applications. Once it's approved, then they start you know, making purchases. And we have to make those payments. We cannot give them the money to make the purchases. We have to do that. So it's budgeted under this section, and it's all this money is grant driven. No real change there. Real quick, Timmy, besides St. Augustine, is there... St. Peter's? Oh, St. Peter's. Yes. Are those the only two? Do you know? Yes. That yeah. Yes, we have to send out, was it a 25 mile radius? Yes. We have to okay. send out letters to see who we wants to opt in. Got it. And if they have the students to opt in or whatever it is. But those two are located physically in our district. Thank you. And the last item is the outgoing transfers. It was budgeted at 402. It's still budgeted at 402. That would put 100,000 for bus replacement, 52,000 for the turf field replacement, 80,000 for laptops, 40,000 for desktops, 30,000 for copiers, and 100,000 for file servers. This so, is that future investment. Mm -hmm. Which is a good thing to have. 
So under for total general fund expenditures, we started our original budget at twenty two million two hundred and fifty four thousand. We're now up to twenty three million sixty seven thousand, which is an increase of about eight hundred and twelve thousand. Um, our general fund revenues exceeding expenditures went from seventeen thousand eight eighty to twelve thousand two ninety eight. So we're still adding. We're, I call this kind of a break even budget. Our beginning fund equity from when we closed. Um, closed the year at um, June 30th of 23, and the general fund was $3,063,000. With a $12,000 increase, we're projecting our fund equity to be $3,076,000, which is, as a percentage of revenues, 13.33%, and as a percentage of unrestricted, unrestricted revenues, it's 18.93%. Do you have any questions? Uh, quick information. So on that real quick, how much do we... Do we have a percentage that we have to have? No, there is no board policy that says that the board will establish 15, whatever that percentage is. Is there anything ever by the state? The or state used it? to have the five, the, you can't go below 5%. Right. right. And there were years we were at 5.03, 5.5. Yeah. 5. 5. Um, but they don't do that anymore? They know they still do, but oh, we're, not, we're just, we're not, just not, not in the danger zone. Oh, got it. <laughs> we're not in the danger like zone at five percent. Yeah. So okay. if you talk to an auditor, you know some auditors might tell you fifteen percent. Okay. Uh, me personally, our fiscal year ends June thirtieth. We do not get any state aid money for the month of July, right. August, or September. So my comfort zone is about three months worth of state aid payments to cover that lack of money coming in for the new year. But it, and it varies, and it just depends on the philosophy. And this has allowed us to not have to borrow money, because we used to have an expense on paying the interest on the money because of that lapse in state aid payments. So, you know, that three months to me is the minimal barometer that we should be our target so that we don't have an, an expense that we don't really need to have expense for. Right, and you have to pay to borrow, you're just taking right. money away from something else. So if you have any questions on the budget amendment, this will come to you. We'll have a resolution for you at the next board meeting. And I can tell you, as much work as we put into it, I already found one change, but that'll wait till the next meeting. I do want to say, in this budget, because we typically take this budget as our baseline to roll over, assuming we're not going to make any changes, any positions that were less than a full year, mm -hmm. this budget has them budgeted a full year. So, for instance, the council that started January, January the amount in this budget is for him, him the whole year. So at the end of the year, you're going to have money unspent because we didn't encumber it this year, right. but it will prepare us for the next budget nice. that we know we have that expense. That we have to come. So we're ready for it. The other aspect, and I want to thank the board again, I've said it many times, the decisions you made on the grants that we've gotten, these one-time grants, these ESSER funds, we have minimized any staff. So when Tammy talked about we lost this grant or we no longer have this, you didn't ever heard that we had to eliminate staff or reduce staff because we've strategically been positioned to not make this structural going forward. Um, now the next part with the ESSER, um, we're going to start getting to that phase of some of the things that we elected to do for a short term that we're going to have to start deciding or, or not doing anymore, and that's what we're going to talk about on the next part for ESSER. Okay. So I'm going to stay here. You can do your next. Does anyone have any questions on that part? So we're good? I have a couple questions. I don't know if maybe I could get back to you, Tammy. Just on, I guess we um, increased some budgets for athletics and for the supplies we talked about. I would just like to see where... What, what we put there and what they spent. Has it been spent? And, and what, what had been spent, yes, yeah, so far this year to make just. So, that, and we can even go for next year's budget, it might be a better time when we start talking about that. But. Well, in the spring when we get into the budget, one of the right. things we will be bringing is Preston is planning on coming to talk about here's what we budgeted for, increase in uniform, here's what we spent, can wait here's the next time. phase okay. of, of that. The same thing we'll be looking at the uh, money for the. Um, like the band and choir uniforms right. that we did in the instrument. So that will come so you'll see a sense of um, what was uh, done. What was done. 
in 111 and, or excuse me, 112 and 113, the function code in, in the budget, you have the, mm -hmm. the actual, all the line item expenses. Um, you can actually see the line item for choir and music to see where they are to date. So they haven't, they haven't, they haven't spent what the board's allocated you know. at this. They haven't spent all of it for what the board allocated in there. So, so, you know what so, those numbers are. so if you look under the 111, 112, 113, that's the function code. Okay. And then the next column over should be the object code. Yes. And those supplies are in 5110, teacher okay. supplies is the well, object That's code. all I need to know. We can, we can email. I don't know yeah. off the top of my head, but we can email the board if you want to look at because you have the yeah, actual have budget. So you look at the account number and say, okay, that's what it is. As well as you'll see under 111, 112, you actually see all the supplies, like first grade supplies, what it was previous year, what yeah, we started, what, what we've increased. It, so you can get a sense of what teachers are spending. So that, that, just, that yeah. big document that you yeah. have has the, the function code, the object code, it has the last year's actual, 22 right. actual, it has the 23 original. I think that's on there twice in two times. It, it is. just du duplicates the same column. It is. And then there's a, um, a column for the new budget. And I think all the way to the far right is a count of actual what's yes. been spent. I just needed some code numbers to look because I was... Yeah, we could, we'll email you those that you guys recently put in the last budget so you can look at that. And if you have any other questions, more than happy to. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Anything else? I'm awesome. Okay. We're going to move on to our next item on the agenda, which is the American Rescue Plan ESSER update. So ESSER 3 was the big one um, of the ESSER grants. It was... Um, given to us $1.7 million. Um, we decided to spend it over three years, so this is the third year. 20% um, of the funding has to be spent on learning loss, which we have made sure is happening, but that's about $350,000. Um, we're able to um, allow to have direct, indirect costs at 4.06%, so that is um, the first section. Um, underneath where it says total expenditure, there's a number 68,271 in the far right column. That's the actual indirect cost that we're allowed to take, so that is uh, part of the budget. We did the COVID building aids in years one and two, and this is year three, and you can see that's been zeroed out. So in total, our budget, in total, out of, out of the all the $1.7 million, we spent about 90000 for the COVID building aids. Then we have the COVID building subs, which is the teachers, and that ranges from up to two in the building to, I think, you know, sometimes we had one in the building, but basically we've pretty much set up to two. Um, we had money in there for year one, we had money for year two, and we have 131000 for year three, which is, include, which is funding that part of the grant for, through March 1st, and that is about 405000 So I'm going to interject here. So at this point... At March 1st, if all the other expenses that Tammy's going to go come to fruition and are true, we technically would run out of this to pay this beginning March 1st. Now, my recommendation is that we begin phasing this out rather than two per building, start in this year, go down to one per building, with ultimately getting, we got to get to zero per building unless we're going to build it into the budget for next year. The cost between the March 1st and the end of the year, that if all these other expenses were true and, and hold, could be used out of the sub substitute account that we have for elementary, middle, and high school in the general fund. So right now we have two per building. My recommendation is we start phasing down to one. So I would work with the principals to determine the one, give notice to, the, to one of them that we're ending this we're facing out and keep the one till the end of the year now I, I say that because when you start looking at the other ones um, there's some costs that we I'll let Tammy finish it that that would be the only thing that's going to could stop earlier than at the end of the year so the next section after the total building subs is the counselor. We funded 50% of the two counselors at the high school and middle school in year one. We reduced that to 25% in year two, and in year three, that's zero. Uh, so that was about $197,000 from the grant. 
under instructional coach learning loss. We put money in for year one but didn't weren't able to find a coach. Um, so that went to year two where we funded one position and now we have it in year three where we're also funding one position and that's about 247000 out of the grant. The second coach that we're funding is funding out of a sec another grant. 31A. 31A. Um, then we did retention bonuses in year one, retention bonuses in year two, and retention bonuses in year three for a total of about 225000 and that's for both admin and teachers. In the next section, we purchased um, Amplify Science curriculum in year one for about 122000 Moving on to professional development. We plan to do professional development each year, but some years it, it, we didn't have the staffing to do that. Um, but in year three, we're planning to do about $39,000 worth of staffing, which is about 221 days of subbing. Um, so that'd be about 39000 coming out of the grant. We also have um, Professor 3 funding the stipend for teachers doing the virtual students. Um, in year one, we shifted that to the ESSER 2 grant. And in year two, we spent about 12000 And in year three, we budgeted 12000 So that's about $24,000 item out of the $1.7 million. So this would be an example that if we don't spend it, the dollar is not spent, we would just charge towards the building sub longer in the year yes. rather than charge it to the general fund. So it's, I don't want to say it's a shell game because that sounds but we're just trying to expend the grants first before we do general. But if we don't use it here, we can, use, we it. can use it up there. Correct. Yeah, you Correct. just have to submit an amendment to the MDE for approval. Um, and so that was the second for the teachers. For the summer programming, we each year we thought we would need summer summer school money, but because of other grants, we did not have to utilize SO3, so we did not. We preserved that. I think we bought about $427 of supplies in year two. Then we had technology equipment. Um, we purchased $21,000 in year two, and then we purchased another $203,000 in year two um, for the Mimeos. And then this year we've purchased 202 laptops, which I mentioned to you for the elementary, middle, and high school for about 99000 So in total, out of the $1.7 million, we spent about 325000 on technology needs. And if you recall that Mimeo, the 203 that we purchased, each of the, the boards in the classroom, we moved that ahead because we wanted to make sure that was completed before the end of the grant so that we didn't, they weren't still, the bill could get paid and the grant could be charged rather than it's not getting paid and we run out of money, you have to give the money back. Right. You have to have the money spent by September 30th of this year. So my goal is to have it spent by June 30th, if possible. And we did some solution tree PD for our staff for about $7,800. And we add up all those numbers, we spent $1.7 million. This is our plan. Any questions on that? So as far as like the teachers for the virtual, like how many virtual students do we currently have? Oh, I think we're down to like five. Okay. Five tops. And is that something then that we're building into the budget to keep then since we're kind of... Because this one we're phasing out, you know, we're not going to have these funds, right? This, this funds to pay. So the question that's going to come up in the budget process mm -hmm. is... Um, as an organization, do we still want to offer virtual as an option for families? Like we did last year. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So right now, as an, I could elect, most of them that we have, it's a unique situation. It's a, a medical issue or um, we have some that leave us for a couple months out of the year. So it's a very unique situation. But we could have had any parent who just wants a virtual. We still offer that as an option. But we don't currently have that built into our budget. We'd have to. Correct. Okay. Correct. And so that would be a line item we'd have to put in the budget um, based on kind of past how many kids we have. Okay. Yes. Second question is, is then the counselor position as well, would we be then talking about that again at the budget, like discussions in regards to put, putting that into our budget then? The, the counselor, all the counselors, all three counselors are paid either out of general fund, 31A, or 31AA. 
So none of them are being paid out of this. Okay. But and that was the two we did, but not not this. Okay. So that's the year three on this line that we had zero. We we strategically began bringing them back so that we wouldn't have the issue of we have to lay someone off. Okay. So this is a requirement that you we publicly present a status. This will get posted on our website for compliance. But at this rate, our target is that all of our ESSER funds are done um, by June 30th uh, and not have to wait till the September 30th. That's our that we're done. The one thing I do want to point out to the board is that that retention bonus, and I think it's in this avenue here when you look at it. If you recall, when we first approved ESSER. There was a 1% uh, off schedule payment that teachers received. Two years ago, we moved that 1% onto the matrix when we did the letter of agreement with them. So, part of last year, when we did at the end of the year, the reason why we were positive is we kept that 1% in the budget, knowing 1% was going to get paid out of. Uh, S or money. Mm -hmm. Because again, when you roll the budget over and you move it, you still got that cost in the next year that you got to account for. Um, this account, the budget has the 1% on the matrix. So whatever the salary matrix says is what we're budgeting. The 1% is, if you recall, the quarterly off schedule payment a teacher receives if they work the previous card marking, they get a, uh, a one quarter of a a, half, a quarter of a percent. So that's what that cost is. Administrators had a retention bonus. Not all of them got it because you had to work the previous year. So that was there. that's not in their contract going forward. So that's why Tammy has that. Um, basically, that's, that goes away. So when you look at the totality, other than the building sub, which has really only been a COVID mm -hmm. window, there's nothing structural in this this budget that we have an account and move forward into the general fund going forward. I shouldn't say in the general fund, in a non no, it's, 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 it's all general. It's all general, but it's a non fund. We're not on a cliff here. Does anyone have any further questions? Thank you, Tammy. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much thank for you. all the years of work on that. And thank you to Renee for all your work on all the grants that have been coming through. Yeah, I appreciate her so much. <laughs> <laughs> you a great team. Great duo there. Okay. Um, we're going to move on to our, uh, our Blue Devil Raves. And we'll start with Sandy. I do not have anything today. Okay. I don't have anything tonight. Kelly? I just want to wish the six high school individuals that are going to states down at Ford Field this weekend the best of luck. Sorry, mm -hmm. Did I say that? No, she no. Said, said states. Wrestlers. <laughs> it's the word wrestlers. wrestlers. <laughs> I knew what she meant, but I just wanted to double check it. That wrestling is what we're talking wrestlers. about. Uh, Angela? Uh, yes, I just wanted to mention, um, tell all the kids that went to Mock Trial over this past weekend um, that they did an amazing job. It was really amazing to see. I was able to go check out the whole scenario. It was a great opportunity for our kids, 9 through 12, they're actually invited to get some civic education. So I want to give a special thank you to Dr. Ladd and Mr. McGovern for all their hard work over the last few months working with these kids. And I want to thank the Oakland County Court and everything that they put on there. It was just a phenomenal program. And if you ever get a chance to see it, I really encourage you to, to see these, these students and how articulate they can be and really getting their point across. So I just wanted to give them a little rave and tell them kids, awesome job, and putting some extra time in academics after school. So it's a very proud moment to see them all up there. Well, thank you. Thank you. Margaret? Okay. Next item on our agenda is our superintendent. <coughs> oh, wait a minute. Our student report. 
and Mr. Wellness is going to take care of that for us tonight. Connor was not able to be here tonight, but he sent me his report this afternoon. So I'll start with the elementary school. March is reading month. Uh, planning is well underway. Um, they will be having a gaming theme. Top readers in each grade level will get to be principal for the day with Mrs. Manguni, amongst many other prizes. Just as a side, if you recall, the principal of the day last year helped design the outdoor um, oh, child care center um, when we were meeting with the architects last year. So um, we got some big <laughs> shoes to fill. So. Yeah. Um, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday's kindergarten and preschool roundup, they're going to have a signing table. Uh, students will be able to get to ride a school bus, experience their first school lunch. They also get a yard sign welcoming them as the future Blue Devil and a T-shirt. Um, we can't wait to see um, the future Blue Devils this Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, last week was the preschool winter formal, which was a, a huge success. Uh, parents and students came dressed up uh, at dressed to impress and dance the night away after listening to some uh, a story read by Mr. Gibson uh, it was truly a fun night for all of our preschool families students were given a book to take home to help promote literacy as well as uh, promoted the importance of early literacy with families uh, there's no report at the middle school at the high school scheduling season starts after the board's uh, action tonight on Wednesday they'll get their forms distributed regarding courses on March 6th, they'll do a carousel of courses, which is an opportunity for students to hear from other students and teachers about courses and what they're interested in. Um, we've done this for a couple of years now, um, and so it really gives students a chance to talk to other students about why they took courses and why they might be interested. Um, eighth grade scheduling um, building tour is scheduled for on March 13th, where the eighth graders will come over and have lunch in the building. Uh, last Friday was the uh, Senior Staff Dodgeball Tournament. Uh, special thank you to the staff. If you haven't seen on our website are some of the pictures from that. There were several staff members who participated. Um, they did not win. Uh, the students <laughs> won the event. Um, but uh, it was a fun night, uh, or fun day, I should say. Um, Fast for night is this Wednesday. It's at 6.30. It was rescheduled from a previous, I believe we had a snow storm or inclement weather. So it was rescheduled for this Wednesday at 6.30. All the class of 2024 parents and students are invited uh, to attend. Um, talk about the document process, et cetera. A financial aid representative will be on hand to help parents and walk through this process. If you have never filled out a FAFSA application, um, it is almost like learning a second language, so I encourage anybody to come get resources and help because what you think you may not know, this will show you you don't know it. So, um, it, so ask for help. Um, it is a process that can open doors for kids, especially getting grants and other opportunities. Varsity Athletics, congratulations to the girls bowling for taking second in the region. They will move on to States this weekend. States is on Friday. Uh, freshman Claire Milbrand qualified for singles, which will be on Saturday. Um, to to uh, your wrestlings at individual states this weekend, as, as Mrs. O'Donnie O'Don said. Congratulations to Jacob Fink, Connor Burgeon, Wyatt, uh, Wyatt Peters, uh, Jackson Lasick, Matt Mish, and Pauline Chapman, uh, who will be uh, competing. Boys basketball had their districts this week at Armada, or has their districts this week at Armada. They will play on Wednesday. If they win, they will play the district final on Friday. Girls basketball closes their regular season as they play Armada at home tomorrow at 6. They will have their district tournament next week. That's, that's his report. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the superintendent and legislative update. Since our last board meeting, there's a couple shout-outs that if you didn't get or see on the website, I just want to point out, we celebrated International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Um, there's some photos on the website. Um, we talked about the importance of the Richmond staff who continuously inspire females to explore the interest, uh, their interests and seek out careers in science. Uh, there was pictures taken with some of our uh, female science teachers uh, out by the marquee recognizing it. Um, Females are underrepresented in the science and should be just as equally represented in the science as males. We also recognize our school resource officer as well as our six building security monitors last week for their contributions for keeping our school safe. It was school resource officer day, but we grouped them together because they both play a vital uh, role 
in keeping our schools safe and fostering a positive relationship with our students and our community. And the one that went out today was regarding CT Month, celebrating the culmination of CT Month, talking a little bit about the different programs that we have, uh, as well as the staff who continuously inspire students to explore careers in, in technical fields. Um, last Thursday was School Bus Driver Appreciation Day, so we thank the drivers. You can also see uh, Ms. Fulgham took some pictures of the drivers in front of the marquee to recognize the importance they have of getting our students to and from school safely. Um, there was information that was sent out to parents regarding the 29th Annual Parenting Conference at the Macomb Intermediate School District this Saturday on March 2nd. If anybody's interested, uh, they can contact CARE of Southeast Michigan. Um, or uh, info at careofsem.com. There's also information on our website. They can just click there under the live feed section. Uh, there is a cost, however, they have many scholarships that they're giving away for free for people to attend the, the parenting conference. If you have not been, it's really a, a really a wonderful event for parents to participate. A lot of resources uh, um, for parents. The Richmond Education Foundation released two scholarships. One is for graduating seniors who are looking to post uh, or to uh, go to a post-secondary school, college, university, trade school, etc. Applications are due on Tuesday, April 30th by 4 p.m. The link and application were emailed directly to the class of 2024, but sometimes they don't tell parents. So parents, the information is on our website. It's also on the scholarship page under the high school counselors page with all the scholarships that are out there. The second application is for summer camp scholarships. Um, this is pretty exciting to allow for parents to apply for um, scholarships to send their kids to summer camps. Um, again, the application is on our website as well as the link, so I'll look for that if you're looking for help paying for summer camps. The National Junior Honor Society at the Middle School is hosting Pause for a Cause uh, from today through March 1st. There's a QR code on the district website that you can purchase items directly from the Macomb County Animal Shelter's wish list, or students may bring items that are listed on the flyer, and there's multiple items on the flyer, which is, again, it's on our website, plus on our Facebook page. Uh, for every item donated, RMS students will be entered into a raffle to win a $50 Dairy Queen gift card. All donations are due this coming Friday. Um, as I said in Connor's report, uh, the class of 2037 kindergarten roundup and the class of 2038 and 2039 preschool roundup is this Wednesday and Thursday, Wednesday being kindergarten. Uh, both nights, dinner begins at 430, and the roundup program starts at 5. So any board members, you are welcome to attend and meet our future Blue Devils. Just a I'm reminder. Sorry, what were the times of that again? Um, dinner starts at four thirty. The program will start at five. Okay, that's Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. Just a reminder: the Macomb County School Board Association is tomorrow. For those of you attending, um, it's at the ISD at six o'clock. Legislative updates: there's just two. Um, the Senate Education Committee, committee approved dyslexia screening requirements. Um, the subcommittee approved it. will go now to the Senate, uh, the full Senate, for uh, consideration. Um, there were very few changes. If you recall, in the last one, there were some concerns that it might lead to very prescriptive and misdiagnosis. Um, not a whole lot of changes came out of the committee, so those concerns are still in the bill that is now going to the full Senate. Uh, the Appropriations Committee began budget hearings. Um, Regarding the school aid, the Department of Education uh, state superintendent gave his two cents on the governor's budget. Um, if you haven't seen it, um, I would encourage you to at least look through the governor's budget. That is the only thing we have. The House and Senate have not released theirs and more than likely will not release theirs till end of April, May, after these um, elections that are, are occurring happen. Um, there is an increase in the budget. Uh, the governor is $241 per pupil. It has several across-the-board increases in, like, 31 AR hours, risk funding, et cetera. So those are some of the things that we are watching. Um, we will begin the budget process at the first meeting in April, um, similar to what we've done in previous years. What we'll do start with the assumptions, what we know of, um, as well as the cost of contracts that we know are going to be costs that we're going to have to add to the budget. Um, I just wanted to point out um, on the 
I don't know if I can get to it on the website. Um, our new system allows us to post, um, maybe well. Uh, visit the website because our new system allows us to post at the same time Facebook as well as the website. And on the right column, Thrill Share, it, or it's called Live Feed, will show you stuff that we've put on the website or on the Facebook page. So if you don't, aren't on social media or don't follow it, you can always refer to the website. Um, and finally, I just wanted to thank the board for supporting my attendance at the uh, recent uh, National Superintendents Forum. Um, while there was no cost for the conference, the board did support the travel expenses. Um, it was uh, February 17th. I went and got arrived late Saturday um, and left um, Tuesday morning, the 20th. Um, but there were multiple sessions. There were superintendents and individuals from all over the state. Uh, if anything, it was um, refreshing knowing the things that we are faced with and the challenges we face. We're not alone. This is across the state, the United States. Um, the groups of individuals in terms of being polarizing in different communities, whatever side of the, the, the conversation you're on, is happening across the whole United States. Um, some of the sessions that I was able to, to go to um, were the how and what and why of AI. Um, if you haven't gotten to the AI world, um, this will become the reality of schools very soon. It's already in our everyday life. I mean, if you start typing an email, it already starts generating what your thoughts are um, to how it monitors your shopping habits and predicts what you're going to do. Um, but this is talking about in, in, in embracing it and integrating it in your school district. Uh, your superintendents from South Carolina, North Carolina, Illinois, who all spoke on this. Um, there was a session to designing and implementing onboarding systems that reflect and reinforce your culture, what you're trying to uh, recruit and retain staff. So there's a lot of ideas that I'll be sharing with Mr. Thiel and as we move forward going in, in the whole recruitment and retention. Um, supporting mental health in K-12 um, was a huge, uh, a lot of sessions on that. Um, gentlemen, uh, superintendents from Texas uh, and Florida were speaking on that, what they're doing in the districts, uh, support services, um, some of the stuff that we take for granted here, um, from whether it's through our ISD, through CARE of Southeast Michigan, these are things they're trying to get started in other states that we already have implemented and going, so it was pretty um, interesting from their perspective. Uh, there was stuff talking about college and career readiness and, and innovation and getting more kids into early college programs. Again, it's some of the, one of those things that we've already had this going in Michigan um, that are not in other states. Um, coaching models, I went to several sessions regarding coaching and the importance of instructional coaching. We have two instructional coaches in our district and, and just the need for that to support the ever-changing teacher that we're, we are getting as far as new hires and, and supporting them to retain and maintain and stay in the, in the industry. Um, there was a session that was talk about the political landscape in public school systems. It was interesting to several of the, the, the superintendents that spoke. Some are elected superintendents in the county, which has a whole different, um, you know, the board's elected, the superintendent's elected, and the two could be on opposite ends of the spectrum and working together. Um, there was one on uh, creating trust in a communication, uh, just understanding where people are um, in processing new um, new sessions, etc. And the last session I attended, which I think was um, um, probably one that hit home with me or, or struck me the most, um, was it was a, the story of Uvalde. Um, it was the superintendent of Uvalde, the Consolidated Independent School District in Texas. If you recall, Uvalde had the, the mass shooting there. Um, and it was from the perspective of, you know, schools prepare for for what they hope ne will never happen, but it was the aftermath of what they're they're still dealing with from um, the restoration, the outcry of uh, outcry and support from the donations that came in, trying to work with staff who were part of that what happened that day, and still to this day aren't at a point to come back and teach. So it was. It was the human side of a tragedy that we really never talk about. And so the, um, from his perspective as superintendent and what they're trying to do, um, 
and the criticism that the media had on the school district and only telling part of the story. And just for instance, um, you know, some of the things he talked about was the delay in, in first responders. Well, what they didn't say was that the, the, the EMS and police are at least 30 minutes away. Um, or that the, the daily occurrence that at least twice a week in that school district is they are constantly going in lockdown because they're not far from the border and there's a, they're dealing with illegal immigrants crossing the border and how they have to respond and protect kids. Um, and when this tragedy happened, the mindset in the, in, the, in the school was this was just a normal occurrence that has occurred there. Um, to the point where Texas has a law that they send in an undercover state agent who tests your security system, and if you fail, if someone gets penetrates and gets in, that you have to have a public meeting and basically tell the public you, you failed and what you're going to do. And um, shortly after this occurrence, they put the fences up, they put the security cameras in, they put the everything that we have pretty much in place here. And there was a food delivery truck that they were wheeling food out of the truck and moving it into the school. They wheeled it into the room. The door was left open, and the state agent came into the school. And so shortly after this happened, they have to publicly say they had a lapse in their security. And just what that does to a community when you're trying to deal with families who you're trying to rebuild, what they've gone through. Um, I didn't know this. But on the day of the situation, there was an award ceremony. Um, many families, like we do here, we offer them to take their kids home for the day. Um, it was a, uh, you know, a short day or whatever. And so half the families took it, and the ones that remained, parents did not choose to take their kids home who attended that award ceremony. Uh-huh. So you feel just the guilt a parent would have. And so... I, I guess the reason why I shared and took so much time is it's real easy to cast blame or doubt or or but there's always more to a story and um, this Uvalde school district every staff member was committed to make sure the kids and state staff were safe and this was a tragic incident that happened and you know they are still recover, recovering from it um, they brought down staff members from Sandy Hook um, and it's been five years, six years since Sandy Hook, I can't remember. And they are still, 10, 12 years ago, they are still reeling with trying to get over that that situation. So um, just, just, I guess the, the lesson I would say is there's always more to the story. And don't just assume that because someone's telling you on the media that this is the truth. There's, there's more. So, um, with that, again, I just want to thank the board for the opportunity. Um, it, I really felt I grew as a person, uh, as a leader in this district, and have a lot of ideas that, that we will be uh, working with my team and, and the administrative team as we move forward. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on our agenda is items of interest from the board. Um, Margaret, we'll start with you this time. Mm-hmm. Oh, good, thank you. Angela? I'm all set, thank you. Kelly? Uh, I'm just going to put a reminder out there that this Friday at Lakes Orchard, there is a dine and donate for the boys' baseball team. Um, you can come out and a uh, portion of the proceeds from the dine and donate. We'll go directly back to the boys' baseball club. Um, there were some other tickets that were sold ahead of time. You may still be able to get them at the door. I'm not positive, but it's for... Um, a tasting room and remember glass and stuff too. I don't know if they're going to have anything available, but that's this Friday, please. What time, Kelly? I'm sorry. And I think, do you think you can text it? Fish, I think. And you're not sure if you can still get tickets at the door. I don't okay. Know. But but there's still the dining dummy. Yeah. Even if you can't yep. do the, the yep. tasting room and stuff. Yep. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything, Sandy. Uh, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay, next item on our agenda is our public comments. Since the last board meeting, uh, the board has not received any emails from the public, and we had no public comments at the last board meeting that we need to address. So at this time, any member of the public may address the board. Please sign in and state your name. You will have three minutes to address the board. Are there any public comments? Okay, 
Okay, being no public comments, we will move on to our action items. Okay, I'm looking for a motion for the approval of the 2024 Middle School High School Course Catalog. Move to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the 2024-2025 Middle School and High School Course Catalog as presented and discussed at the February 12, 2024 Board of Education. Do I have support? Support. Cindy? That was me. Yes. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I'm looking for a motion for the approval of a contract for Kagan Cooperative Learning Professional Development. I move to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the August 12th through 13th, 2024 Kagan Day 1 and Day 2 Cooperative Learning for an amount not to exceed $9,387 and August 28, 2024 Kagan Win Win Discipline Day 1 Training for an amount not to exceed $19,605 as presented and discussed at the February 12, 2024 Board of Education meeting for which funding from the 2024-25 General Fund shall be authorized. Do I have support? Support. Support. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? This will be a roll call vote. Uh, Margaret? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Sandy? Aye. Angela? Aye. I vote aye. Motion carries. Looking for a motion for the approval of, of the proposed overnight extended trip request to Detroit. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the overnight extended student trip to Detroit, Michigan, as presented at the February 12, 2024 Board of Education meeting and outlined in the attached documentation. Do I have support? Support. support. I'll get that one, Angela. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? Um, Sorry. Just go ahead. Oh, good. Just uh, the attached documentation. That's the presentation from the teacher that we talked that we were going to fund like we do when they go to. So, does that need to be included in this motion, or is that just a given based on because it wasn't in the documentation that the teacher presented? We talked about it after. Right. about the food or the uh, I would I would do it as we would do like any other and we follow that that form so it doesn't have to be in the uh, no, okay. the intent of the boards okay. the, um, and I was just going to say that remember at the last board we added the student mm -hmm. so it really just is the cost that you know how many more breakfasts or lunches so but it's still you're just approving the overnight trip to go to the um, the DECA or the yeah, the DECA competition any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Looking for a motion for the proposed overnight extended trip request to Gaylord, Michigan. I motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent to approve the overnight extended student trip to Gaylord, Michigan as presented at the February 12, 2024 Board of Education meeting and outlined in the attached documentation. Do I have support? Support. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Looking for a motion for the approval of a candidate for the MASB Board of Directors and authorization of the superintendent to submit our MASB Board of Directors ballot on behalf of the RCS Board of Education. I have who I would like to vote for, but I'm embarrassed to say that I don't have the documentation. That's right here. Do you want to see it? The, the, this? Was it the incumbent? Is that it was here? the incumbent, yes, that we uh, talked about last. So Bridget, that would be Bridget. Yes. It was. Make, make, push, make a question. Oh, is it Bridget? Bridget. It's Bergen. Oh, yes. oh, yeah, you're right. It, it is, is Bergen. Uh, you're right. Bridget. Yeah. Yeah. So, does anybody have any? Do I just motion or do you want to do, do, the, motion. do the motion first? Do the motion. I motion to select Bridget or er, Birgit McQuistian as the Richmond Community Schools candidate for the Michigan Association of School Board Region 8 Board of Directors and authorize the superintendent or his designee to 
to cast a ballot for said candidate by March 6, 2024. Thank you. Any discussion? Other than it's just really hard to yes. anything about these people. I do like to say that I do like to see what the MASC has been offering us and trying to make work with the state to get our classes paid. So I'm sure the incumbent maybe I've seen some growth just in the last few years have been on the board there. So maybe she is. That's kind of why I'm so interested. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Looking for a motion for the approval of a school resource officer agreement. I motion to approve the school resource officer agreement for the 2023-24 school year between Richmond Community Schools and the City of Richmond based on the terms and conditions outlined in the attached documentation. Furthermore, I authorize the superintendent to extend an agreement for the 2024-25 school year based on the approved fiscal year 2025 budget contained on the approved this year, 2025 budget contains funding for a contract and school resource officer. Do I have the support? Support. Angela. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I'm looking for a motion to go into closed session. A motion to go into closed session for the purposes of real property pursuant to Section 8D of the Michigan Open Meetings Act. Do I have support? support? Thank you. Any discussion? This is a roll call vote. Angela? Aye. Um, Sandy? Aye. Kelly? Aye. Margaret? No. And I probably know because I believe. I've never done this before, but I'm doing it because I believe all seven board members should be in the session for whatever this time is. I vote aye. Does the motion carry? The it does it. Okay, okay. So we will not be closed in the closed session. You have to have five.